Welcome, everybody. Thank you for gathering uh, in this way. Uh, this will be um, um, the, the last time where we do this. Well, I say that, uh, but <laughs> hopefully the last time where we do this in, in exclusively this way. Um, uh, we'll, we'll move after uh, this coming Sunday. If you're uh, looking to come to church uh, on site on Sunday, um, uh, please do call the office and just let uh, Joan or one of the volunteers know that that's, uh, that's your intention so that we can uh, hold space for you um, because we do have occupancy limits that we need to, to stay under. Uh, so next Thursday, um, it is my intention, um, the God of technology and uh, the patron saint of Zoom, whoever that might be, um, uh, interceding on our behalf um, to have a sort of blended um, experience so that if you uh, would like to or need to stay at home, um, uh, then please do uh, do that, but join us uh, in this way. Uh, or join us at a safe distance um, from each other um, in the, the chapel uh, here at All Saints. Um, we are looking at uh, the lectionary readings for this past Sunday, um, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Um, and uh, we are deep into ordinary time and uh, working our way through uh, the life and ministry of uh, of Jesus while he was with us uh, here on earth. And we're celebrating from the Book of Common Prayer. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. And to let them return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most cheaply so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. Together, let us confess our faults. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought not to have done, which we ought to have done, and have done those things which we ought not to have done and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. 
he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Together, let us rehearse the Vanity. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your forebears tempted me, Proved me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 48, great is the Lord and highly do be praised. In the city of our God is his holy hill. Beautiful and lofty, the joyful of the earth is the hill of Zion, the very center of the world and the city of the great king. God is in her citadel. He is known to her sure refuge. Hold the kings in the earth assembly and march forward together. They look and were astounded. They treated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in childbirth. Like ships of the sea when the east wind shatters. As we have heard to have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts and the city of our God. God has established her forever. We have waited in silence in your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion walk round about her. Count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulk work. Examine her strongholds that you will tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our guide forevermore. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 
I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows, was caught up in the, into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mar mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be fooled, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to me, from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that I would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ Jesus may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service continues on page seven of your prayer book. Let us say together the Te Deum. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles, praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets, praise thee. The noble army of martyrs, praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty. Thine honorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver us, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin 
and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continuing on page nine of your prayer book, let us say together the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us say together, uh, the prof let us profess together uh, the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the queen. And do thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us.
God of the prophets, in every age you send the word of truth familiar yet new. Let us not be counted among those who lack faith, but give us vision to see Christ in our midst and to welcome your saving word. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right. Most of you will have heard at some point in some sermon of mine that I grew up in St. Thomas. Um, at, well, I came of age in St. Thomas. I lived in lots of places, but that's sort of the, the formative years were, were there. Um, the sign driving into town um, gets uh, amended every couple of years or so um, with the population as well as... Um, whatever team Joe Thornton is presently playing for gets added to the sign. It, all of them are on there, the Canadian national team, the junior team, uh, the local junior B team, the Boston, uh, I've lost track, Boston and San Jose and now Toronto. Um, the, the hometown crowd is very uh, pleased that he's playing for the hometown, hometown-ish team. Um, I, I know him, uh, I, I know of him. He probably wouldn't remember me. Um, and the other person uh, who um, I, I sort of want to mention today, uh, it, her name isn't on the sign. Um, uh, I grew up with her too, sort of, in the same sort of way that you know other people at high school that are there, but you don't actually know them. Um, and. Uh, Rachel McAdams is an actress um, who also attended my high school um, at about the same time that I was there. Uh, we overlapped for uh, three, she was a year ahead of me, so whatever. Um, she's made some decent movies over the years of, of sort of poppy um, love story type movies. That they're, they're really good for what they are, um, as far as I can tell. Um, so both of those people still come back to town. Joe, I imagine more now that um, he's playing for the local team. Um, and uh, Rachel as well. Um, two more different people you could not possibly sort of put next to each other. Um, uh, they're both famous for their own sort of reasons and have been for about the same amount of time um, since about 1997 until now. Um, they both make boatloads of money um, and one of them's a jerk um, and one of them isn't. <laughs> um, so the reason Joe sticks um, so firmly in my head um, is probably um, uh, reinforced by the, the dents from the spitballs in the back of my head um, from math class. He, he and I were both uh, apparently good enough at math in the ninth grade. Um, 
to be uh, recruited to the enriched math program for the 10th grade. Um, I didn't carry on with math and he really didn't need to, um, but um, because he left after that year to go play for Boston, I think, it, like straight out of high school into uh, Boston. Um, and I never really took math again after that year. Um, and uh, Rachel was in all the school plays um, and really quite talented. And uh, they won the Sears Drama Festival when that was, when Sears was still a thing and the Sears Drama Festival was still a thing. They, um, uh, they won that. Um, and both of them still come to town. Um, at Rachel uh, goes, last I heard, still shops at the superstore with her mom when she comes back to town. Um, and the last I heard of Joe, he was cruising down the main drag, Talbot Street, um, with an entourage of four black Escalades at very high speed. Um, <laughs> and so he's not improved as far as I can tell. Um, but for the people in town, it's hard to see either of them as anything but just the kids they've always been. They're still kids in the popular imagination of town. Um, uh, Rachel's still the girl next door. Joe's still the boy next door. Um, we're all a bit skeptical that anything great can come from St. Thomas, which is not a very exciting town um, as they go. Um, but it turns out that they both are from St. Thomas. Um, and they both do still come back to town. Um, so Jesus went back home, uh, according to our story today. Um, and he is also met with skepticism and disbelief. Um, because, which I sort of can get just based on, on the, the Joe and Rachel uh, stories, because none of us really believes um, that, that anybody next door to us um, can grow up to be somebody important to other people. Um, um, Joe was just the, you know, pimply faced gangly sort of athletic kid um, who pelted spitballs at the back of my head in math class. Um, and, um, and Rachel was just, you know, the, the talented amateur actress that we saw on the, the, the crappy school stage in, in St. Thomas. So if we, if we believe, and I, and I do uh, believe that, that Jesus experienced sort of the whole range of, of human experiences, I sort of imagine him being that sort of pimply faced gangly son of a carpenter that, that nobody can sort of imagine um, you know, they don't imagine anything bad from him, but they don't imagine anything great from him either. Um, um, they know his mother, they know his brothers and sisters. He can't be anybody special. And all Jesus could say in response to those doubts and that skepticism is prophets aren't without honor except at home, except among their family and except in their own household. He was amazed a bit at their unbelief and, and really couldn't do anything um, while he was among them. Except if you count the, or don't, you know, if you don't count the, the miraculous healing of people while laying hands on them, that, that feels like something. Um, and he should give himself some credit for that. But it would seem that part of the power of Jesus healing required that the sick person actually believe that Jesus could heal them. Having faith was the requirement, I guess. And the requirement was also necessary as Jesus began to send out the 12 disciples into the surrounding town. Jesus gave 
specific instructions go in pairs. Uh, the buddy system, I guess. That they would have authority over unclean spirits to take only just the essentials um, on their body, like as far as clothing goes, and no money or food or a bag. Remain where you're sent, and if they don't want you there, dust yourself off and get out. And they went, proclaiming that people should repent, casting out the demons that they'd been given authority over, and anointing with oil and curing. The, um, the, the, the writer, Mark, um, doesn't give us any indication of how successful they were, how many towns they had to dust off from uh, on their way back, but we're given some impression that they were moderately successful. It feels sort of like a, a foretaste of the power of the, the Holy Spirit being sent to them after Jesus' death, the Pentecost power that they would get um, further down in the story. They were able to receive the Spirit at that point because they believed Jesus' promise. The people of Jesus' hometown didn't believe that Jesus could amount to much of anything at all. And they, weren't under, un, they were not able to understand the divinity of Jesus. They were too close to the humanity of Jesus uh, to be able to get it. I'm not sure that any of, uh, you know, given my skepticism about Joe and Rachel, I'm not sure that, that I'd have been any different at that point, that, that sort of proximity. But how glorious would it be to be able to believe in his power, in his divinity? We have the benefit of 2,000 plus years of hindsight. We know how the story as it's written ends. We know the beginning of the faith, the, the resurrection and the descent of the Holy Spirit, the grace that God gives us, even though we don't deserve it. We are graced by God because God loves us and not for any other reason. We're given the opportunity to call on the grace of God when we are in need, when we waver in our belief, when we need the strength that God's grace gives us. I was given a, a cross at um, my graduation from seminary. Um, and there's a tradition at Huron College where the um, one of the professors handpicks uh, uh, a passage that gets inscribed on the back of this handmade wooden cross that's uh, been made in the maintenance department at Huron for all of its existence as far as I know. Anyways, I, I'll show it to you someday. I should have brought it um, down. But on the back of mine, it reads, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's from Philippians 4. So for me, yeah, this is where I get the strength that I need to carry on. Jesus needed the people of Nazareth to believe. And they weren't able to at that point. The disciples needed people to believe in them. And they were able to heal and to cast out demons. When you believe, all things are possible. The body of Christ, two or three gathered together. We are a powerful force for good in the world.
So I might start to give Joe a break now. Um, he's been a, like a niggling thorn in the back of my head for probably too long. Um, um, because I, I suppose a hockey career of, of 20, I don't know, 1997 to now, I don't do mental arithmetic, but that's a pretty long hockey career as hockey careers go. So um, I'll, I'll maybe start to give him a break uh, for the spitballs. Um, the good news that I hear is that A, um, if prophets aren't accepted in their hometown, I don't have to go back to St. Thomas to be a priest. Um, also Stratford or Port Stanley or any of those other places that I grew up, um, which suits me just fine. Um, <laughs> um, also, joking aside, um, that just because the people you come from doubt you or dismiss you or um, uh, you know joke about you or you know all of those things, um, don't believe them because it may be that it, it is true that you have honor and you have. Um, a, a calling and a mission and a ministry um, and they can't see it. So figure out what it is you're meant to be doing. Don't believe the pe people in your hometown because they're wrong about you, probably. Um, and just do the thing to which you are called um, with um, my sort of totem passage from Philippians in mind. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and do her plenteously with heavenly gifts, Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of heaven and earth, creator of all things, seen and unseen, we join with the church through all ages, praying that you cast out all evil and renew the face of the whole creation. Grant wisdom and courage to political leaders so that they enact every nation for common good, the justice you command. Grant intelligence and generosity to leaders of businesses and industry so that they provide dignity and safety for every person and household on the planet. Grant imagination, passion to educators and to artists so that they give clear guidance and true vision, enabling us to praise you for the wondering, wonderful beauty of our world. 
grant compassion and skill to leaders and caregivers so that the sick and the suffering may know your touch as a foreshadowing of their resurrection. We pray this day for all those who are suffering at the hands of the violent and powerful, hungry, the greedy, the malicious, the ignorant, and the misguided, and the power of evil beyond human control. God of healing and comfort, pain and loss are all around. Soothe the frantic and bolden and the fearful. Ease the suffering of the sick, especially thinking of all indigenous people, Pope Francis, Gloria, Andy and Claudette, Cheryl Brazo, Fitz Moore, Ronnie Riberty, Lauren, Ben and Sheila, Holy, Mohad Al Dalami, Wayne in Tanzania, and the community of Lytton, BC. May each one who is afflicted find comfort in your faith, hope, and love to enable them to overcome these demonic attacks. Give peace to all who grieve and hope to those facing death. Remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed in faith, especially remembering all the people affected by the collapse of the building in Miami, Dodd, Florida. Jim Fowler, Wayne Strong, and Horatio. Empower your church, the Holy Spirit, to proclaim the gospel with authority, for not even the gates of hell can withstand the grace of Jesus Christ. Complete the renewal you began in raising Jesus from the dead. Then will all creation shout with us, hallelujah, again. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. One moment while we make a, a scene change, and I will ask uh, Bev to, uh, to bless us today. Bit more. There you go. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Now his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to unmute yourselves. Bev at a safe distance and uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ Jesus and the Christ. love of God and, and the God fellowship, and the fellowship of, the of the Holy Ghost be with us all, with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Amen.